Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome folks, you're the Hungry Gamer is back with another how to play video. Today we're going to learn how to play Mercurial by David Go. Now before I get started, I do need to point out that everything here is still in the prototype stage and is subject to change and improvement. As the game gets closer and closer to actually being released, I will go into the Klingon subtitles and make any adjustments and notes if things have changed since I've released this video. And you can also take that as a reminder to turn on your Klingon subtitles so you can find out if there's any changes to these rules. Additionally, as always, I will not be giving you any of my personal thoughts on this game. This is purely a how to play video. If you would like to check out my thoughts on the game, you can check out my preview. There's a link down in the description as well as a link to a two-player playthrough of the game you just want to kind of see how it actually works. Now, with all of that being said, let's talk about Mercurial. First, let's go over what we see here. Obviously, here we have all the different dice with their various faces. We have our mana tokens. We have our QD crystal tokens. We have our extra point tokens right here. Down here, we have our two discount tokens, which will make sense in just a bit. We have our three double-sided arcanas right here, which again, we will talk about a little bit later. We have our prestige card right here, and we have our equilibrium card here. Here we have our four different characters, which have both an asymmetric side here with different specific classes, and a simple initiate side here, which are all the same. And for the purposes of this video, I'll be using the initiate side just to keep things a little bit simpler. Though in the playthrough video, you will see two of these different characters. Here we have our starting alteration cards, as well as starting artifacts. Here we have our spell deck, our alteration deck, and our heroic deed deck. Now, let's go ahead and talk about how this game is set up. All right, so the first thing that I've gone and done is I've set up the basic board. You'll notice I have my equilibrium card over here. I'll explain what that does in just a bit. I have my prestige card with some of the prestige victory point tokens on top of that. And I've randomly selected the three arcanas. Again, they are double-sided. You can either go ahead and choose exactly what you want, or you can choose at random. I have those set off to the side as well, so they can be referenced by any player. And then I've set up here at the top, the heroic deeds, then the alterations, then the spell cards. And what's going to happen is you are going to deal out six of each, like so. Then, just below the leftmost spell card, you will place the minus one mana token, like so. Then, next to the second leftmost spell card, you will place the minus one acuity token, like so. Then, on each of the heroic deeds, you will place one mana crystal, and two acuity crystals, like this. Then once you've done that, you are almost ready to start the game. Next thing that each player will need to do is they'll need to take their character board and get the resources that they're going to need. If we look here at the top, it's going to tell you how many dice you're going to have for the game. In this case, the initiate's going to have six dice that they're able to use. Then you look at how many mana crystals they're going to have, in this case five, and how many acuity crystals, in this case, three. And those will be your starting resources. And what you're going to see here is there are two rows for each type of resource, which means you can have a total of 10 mana crystals at any given time and 10 acuity crystals at any given time. You may never go beyond 10 of each. Next thing you do is you check down here in the corner, and that tells you what your starting alterations are going to be. In this case, that would be these two cards here. And then this question mark means that you'll get a random artifact card which is pulled from this set of starting possible artifacts here. You simply shuffle them up and draw one of them. In this case, I've drawn this one, which will allow me to play two alterations after I've played this one, and that'll make sense in just a bit. Then you can take this and put it to the side. We'll talk a little bit more about it later, but for now, that's all you need to know. The last thing you need to do before you start the game is make sure that all players are perfectly aware of what these different arcanas are and what the conditions are in order to achieve them. I will note now that once the conditions have been achieved, the arcana will be taken by the specific player that achieved it, 
and they and they alone would have access to the in-game scoring that comes with it. And I'll come back and reference these a little bit later. The first thing you're going to do at the beginning of the game is roll your dice. And for the moment, I'm going to place those down and let's talk about them. Do note that you are only going to roll your dice at the beginning of the game and then every time you cast a spell sequence. So what I have on these dice are various elements. I have water, I have fire, I have earth, I have two ethers, and another earth. I'll note that there is also lightning and there is also void. Now, void and ether I will talk about in just a bit. For the moment, we're going to spend our time talking about the various core elements of the game. Once you do that, you move into each player's turns. On each player's turn, you're going to have a choice of doing two different things. You can either cast a spell, and we'll talk about that in just a bit, or you can pick one and play one. And what that means is you can pick one of any of these cards here. Notice I'm pointing at the alterations row and the spell row. I'm not pointing at the heroic deed row. And that's because in order to obtain heroic deeds, you have to cast a spell. And I'll point out now that each heroic deed has a different prestige value listed on the bottom. And that's going to be how you wind up scoring who wins at the end of the game. Most of the time, you're going to be doing pick one and play one. And I will note that you can pick one and play one in any order, meaning you can pick one of these cards and then play another one, or you can play a card first and then pick one. First, we'll talk about the alterations here. To claim one, you can either simply take the one furthest to the left, like so, or if you don't want that one, you can take one of your acuity crystals off of your player board, place it on the one furthest to the left, and then take any of the other ones here that you would like. It's important to note that you do not have to put a crystal to skip past each one. So by putting one crystal here, I could take this one, or I could take this one. And then I'll note at the end of your turn, you'll go ahead and refill the deck. Now, had I taken one over here, like so, the first thing that would happen is everything would slide down, and then you would fill from the right side, like so. If I wanted to pick one of the spells down here, then that is done slightly differently. If you look down at the bottom of these spells, you'll see that they have a cost. In this case, I could put three fire dice on there, and then I would be allowed to pick this one up, or I could put a single fire die, because that's the only option there, and then buy the other one with mana. And as you can see here, it has two mana in each one, so I could put two mana on each of those. However, you can also use your acuity at a two to one rate. So if I wanted, I could put two mana there, one mana there, and then two acuity and also claim it, or any combination of dice, acuity, and mana that you happen to have at the moment. And then just like with the alterations, after you've claimed a spell, the others slide over and you refill from the right. I'll also point out now, that the spell furthest to the left comes with a minus one mana discount. So that means instead of having to pay two mana for each of these, I could take one of them and only pay one mana, and then two mana for this one, and then two dice, or three dice and one mana, and so on and so on. The same thing is true here with the second one, except you get a minus one acuity bonus, meaning the first mana that you replace with acuity can be replaced for only one instead of two. Now, as you probably noticed, it is very specific which type of dice you need to claim these different spells. And what you're probably wondering is, how on earth do you get your dice to actually match up and do that? And the way you're going to be doing that is with these alterations here. This is going to be the core of the game. You're going to be playing these to alter your dice. And those can be done in a few different ways. The first thing that I'll note is all of the different alterations that you have, starting and ones that you buy, are going to have different abilities on them. I will also note that all of them will also have, down in the bottom left corner, an alternate action that you can take with that card. So if for some reason you don't have one that has a main ability that you're interested in using, you can always use it for this ability at the bottom, which will either be take one acuity or reroll two of your dice. Now I'm not gonna go through and explain every single different variation that you have of the alterations, but I will explain the main ideas. As you look at these cards, you're gonna see something up here at the top it's going to give you a certain type of element that you have to have. In this case, that would be lightning. And I can alter one die from lightning, only once, 
to either water or earth. You'll notice that there is a symbol right here. That's because as you perform heroic deeds, those deeds you'll collect will have these various symbols on them, and that will enhance what it is that you're doing. So for every one of these symbols I had on one of my heroic deeds, I would be able to do this one more time. And that'll make more sense at the end, but just keep in mind that that's what these symbols are. You also might come across a card like this. And this would tell you that you can turn either a fire or a lightning into a void. And that two there means that you could do it two times. So I could turn one of each or two of the same one into void if I so chose. Then, when that is done, you'll see this horizontal line. Once you have completed your action on the top, then you're able to perform the bottom action, which in this, which in this case is take one acuity plus one more for every one of these symbols you have on your heroic deeds. And again, and again, that'll make sense after we talk about heroic deeds in just a bit. Then the final type of card I want to talk about are these right here. What this means is you must have somewhere two water on your dice. Now those can be on dice that you have not spent yet, or on dice that you have already spent on spells. It is important to note right here that when you claim a spell, all the resources that you use will actually stay on that spell until you have completed the casting. So if I happen to use two water dice, two mana, and four acuity to get this particular spell, all of those are going to stay on that card until I actually cast the spell. However, these two water that are on this card would count when it comes to determining if I'm able to play this particular alteration. And assuming I had the two water, I would be able to turn any dice that I wanted up to two times into void, and then I would claim one acuity plus one more for every one of these symbols that I have. And as a reminder, I could always use it just to reroll two dice. And that's what you're going to be doing for the bulk of the game, as you're gathering different spells down here, using these alterations to adjust your dice, and get you more acuity so you're able to obtain these spells. Now you're going to be using these spells that you're claiming in order to complete these heroic deeds at the top, which is how you are going to score your points in the game. So let's talk about the cast action right now. Now let's just assume that I had obtained these two different spells and I was ready to do a cast action. And so what I would do is on my turn I would declare I am now casting my spell and then I would look at all the spells that I had obtained and then I would add up their totals. And spells are broken down into two basic types. They can have either Restore, which is the blue symbol here, or they can have Ruin, which is the red symbol here. For the moment, let's pretend I cast a spell that was all Restore. This one right here would be worth 10 Restore, while this one here would be worth four Restore times the number of spells in the entire casting. So in this case, two times four would be eight, meaning I would have a total of 18 Restore. Then I would go look at my player board and see if I have any other bonuses that might come into play. And that might happen if you have any leftover dice. As we look down here at the bottom of the player board, it tells you how that's going to work. So for the sake of argument, let's just pretend that I had one die left over and I'd used two mana to purchase one of those spots. If you recall, we had 18 restore. However, I also have this one other die. And let's just pretend that it was an earth die. We look down here, we see that water and earth is worth one restore. So this die would add on to my total casting, giving me 19 restore. However, if I happen to have a fire or a lightning, you'll see that is worth one ruin. And this is where I'm going to tell you that ruin cancels out restore. So even though my spell was worth 18 restore, because I have one ruin right here, I actually only have 17. At the, in the same vein, if I also had had, say, this spell that I had picked up, you'll notice that it was worth 5 Ruin. So that would mean my initial casting was 10 for the 1 spell. And that, of course, would change the numbers completely. So if you recall, we had 10 for this spell right here. Then we would have this 5 Ruin, which would actually subtract from the 10, giving me a total of 5. And then added to that, we have this other one here, which is four times every spell in the chain. And here we now have one, two, three spells, meaning this is worth 12 plus the five, and we're back to 17 restore. You'll also note that you're able to spend acuity at the rate of four acuity for one ruin, or three acuity for one restore. And you have the option to do that at this point when you're casting the spell, though you do not have the option of using your dice. You always must use any dice left over, whether it helps or hurts the casting. 
but for the sake of argument, we will assume that we did in fact have the Earth spell, which got us up to 19 Restore. We would then look at all six of the heroic deeds. In this case, I'll just show you the three, and you see what you're able to purchase. In this case, with my 19 Restore, I could purchase this heroic deed right here, which would be worth seven points at the end of the game. I'd be unable to purchase this one here because it's 26, or this one here because it's 34. You'll also note that they have competing ruin numbers that will also allow you to complete the heroic deeds, and across the board it takes less ruin than it does restore to complete these heroic deeds. The final thing to point out is there may be times in which your casting simply does not go how you might wish, and you're unable to obtain any of the heroic deeds. You'll also make use of this any time you have generated more restore or ruin than your heroic deed actually costs. In that case, you're able to simply turn the ruin and restore in for prestige points. And you're gonna be doing this at a rate of either three ruin for every one prestige or four restore for every one prestige. However, we will assume that we have completed this heroic deed and you'll notice that there's these various symbols that I've been referencing as I've been talking about the different alterations and this is where you'll be getting those. I will now point out that this is also the end game trigger. Depending on how many players that you have in the game, as soon as someone has obtained the set number of heroic deeds, everyone will get one more casting, and then the game will be over. Additionally, you'll see that there is this one mana and two acuity on this particular card. These are things that you, in addition to this card, also get to claim and put onto your player board. In addition to placing those on your player board, you'll also get to reclaim your dice, which you'll be rolling in just a moment. You'll get to take all the mana off the cards, and put those back onto your board. However, all the acuity that you've spent goes back into the supply. And you'll see here, we'll do that with both of the spells that we cast. And you'll now note that this gives us more mana than we started with as we have six. And the last things that you'll do is you'll take all of your dice, you'll re-roll them, set them on your board, then you'll take the spells that you used and put them aside in your discard pile. For the most part, you will not be referencing these again, though there are some arcanas where these cards will give you some additional in-game scoring. You will notice that I did not talk about Ether yet, and I'm going to explain that now. There are some spells that are activated using Ether. So let's pretend that we have purchased this spell here with two dice and four mana, like so. Now what you'll see here is that this spell is worth six ruin. However, if you have an unspent die that's showing Ether, you get the higher number right there. So you would get eight ruin for this. I'll point out now that it does not matter how many different spells you have in your chain, it only takes one ether to activate all of them. So in this case, this would now be worth eight, and then this one here would be worth two times how many spells there are, so it would be worth four. This would give you 12 ruin. Finally, there are two other types of spells that you might come across. The first is a linking spell. And what this means is you are going to attach this to one of the spells that you are already casting. So again, let's pretend that I already had this spell here, and we'll pretend that I have my ether. When I do my cast, I decide that I'm going to attach this particular spell to this one here. And what this is saying is I get to attach it to a spell, and I'm going to multiply whatever the result is by the result down here. So in this case, because I have the ether, it would be eight, times three, or 24 ruin. If I did not have the ether, it would be six times two, or 12 ruin. The other type of spell is one are enchantments like this. In this case, all my ruin would be converted to restore and then multiplied by two. And then the last type of symbol that you might come across are these right here. In this case, I would receive one ruin for every acuity that is on my board at the time of casting. So that means you're gonna be unable to spend acuity to boost your ruin or restore without affecting this number. So at the time of casting, after I've spent all of my acuity for extra ruin and restore, and I had five acuity left on my board, this would be worth five ruin. Now let's briefly talk about some of these arcanas. These are cards that are going to be claimed the first time someone accomplishes their requirements. In this case, the first time someone casts a spell that has five different spells in the chain. This one here, the first time someone casts a spell that has three different cards that can use ether, and the ether has been activated. And this one here, the first time someone casts a spell that has a water spell, a lightning spell, and an earth spell. And you're able to tell what kind of spell those are 
by looking at the top corner of the spell and also at the color around the edges. And for each of these, they're going to give you a different endgame scoring bonus. For example, here, for every two water spells in your discard, you'll gain a point. For every four spells, period, in your discard, you'll gain a point. And for every two ether spells in your discard, you'll gain a point. And you'll see that there are six different arcanas available, and each of them have different circumstances that allow you to claim them. Now, that brings me to this here. This is called Equilibrium. Now, you will recall that I said Ruin and Restore cancel each other out. And that is what this card is for right here. When you cast your spell, if your Ruin and your Restore completely cancel each other out, so you have a net zero, then you have Equilibrium. And you'll notice here, it tells you what number you have to achieve. So if I were to cast a spell that had six Ruin and had six Restore, I would obtain this right here, which would mean instead of my zero, I would get either 10 Ruin or 14 Restore, and I would also get this bonus right over here. When you come to the end of the game, you're going to add up all of the points on your heroic deeds, plus any points that you've obtained from your various arcanas. To that, you're going to add any of the prestige points you gain from a not quite so efficient casting, and then you're going to look at these symbols on the heroic deeds that you happen to accomplish. Every pair of like sigils will get you two points, and every three of a kind will get you five points. Then whoever has the most prestige points will be the winner. So there you have it, folks. That is the overview of how to play Mercurial. As I said at the beginning, if you're interested in my thoughts on this game, you can check out my preview video. And if you would just like to see the game in action, you can check out my two-player playthrough. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.